Hi, this is our e-collaboration project and we're going to talk about Black Lives Matter. History. The VLM was started in United States in 2013 with the killing of Trayvon Martin. Trayvon was shot by George Zimmerman, who was claiming self-defense even though Trayvon was unarmed. Zimmerman was charged with the first degree murder. Black Lives Matter was co-founded by Patrice Can Coolers, Alicia Garza, and Opal Tometi. In August 2014, a white police officer killed Michael Brown and the movement called for an end to the systematic racism and to defund the police. The VLM moved to Toronto in 2014 for a protest in September for the death of Jermaine Carvey by a police officer in Peel. In July 2015, another rally took place over the death of Carvey and Andrew Loku, who was a Sudanese immigrant shot by police on July 5, 2015. Black Lives Matter has created programs and spaces to support education and activism. This includes the VLMTO Freedom School, a three-week queer positive summer program for black children in Toronto region and the Wellesley Center for Activism and Art. Canadian history. More chapters were established in 2016 in Vancouver, Edmonton, Waterloo, Sudbury, Fredericton, St. John's, and Montreal. There was also an organized sit-in in the annual Pride Parade in Toronto where they protested the police presence and demanded more funding and representation for racialized communities. All of these demands have been met, including anti-Black racism and classism within Toronto school boards, anti-racism anti training, removing police presence from TDSB schools, as well as securing funding for queer Black youth in Toronto. The VLM movement was founded in Toronto by Janaya Khan and Sandy Hudson. In 2018, Sanana Akande received an award for YWCA Toronto Women of Distinction Award, honoring her many years of political service and fighting for equality and improving the social, economic, cultural, and political status of women. You can see here a map of the VLM movement. Hate Crimes Against the Black Community between 2019 and 2020, the number of police reported crimes motivated by hatred of a race or ethnicity increased 80%, from 884 to 1,594. Much of this increase was a result of more police reported hate crimes targeting the Black population, over 318 incidents. The East or Southeast Asian population over 202 incidents, an indigenous population, over 44 incidents, and the South Asian population, over 38 incidents. Hate crimes targeting the black populations remain the most common types of hate crimes reported by police, representing 26% of all hate crimes. According to the 2020 General Social Survey, GSS, on social identity, one in five black, 21% and indigenous, 22% people have little or no confidence in police, double the proportion among those who were neither indigenous nor a visible minority, 11%. Statistics. Perceptions of the police varied among the black population. Almost 6 in 10, 58% Canadian-born Black people rated at least one element of police performance poorly, well above the proportion of Black immigrants, which was 15%. The 2021 Canadian Legal Problems Survey found that about one quarter of Black people, 26%, and Indigenous people, 27%, experience problems or disputes that they consider to be serious and not easy to fix. This was higher than the proportion among non-Indigenous, non-visible minority people, 70%. The 21 Canadian Legal Problems Survey found that about one quarter of Black people, 26%, experience problems or disputes that they consider to be serious and not easy to fix. 
Black people, 8%, were more likely than non-Indigenous, non-visible minority people, 2%, to have encountered a serious problem or dispute related to discrimination. People's reaction to the movement. Only 33% of Canadians polled reportedly feeling negative about the movement, compared to 45% of Americans. Where Americans and Canadians do appear to agree is on the question of whether the protests are likely to lead to lasting change. In Canada, 45% of respondents said no, compared to 33% who said yes and 21% who said they didn't know. U.S. respondents felt similarly, 46% to 33% with 20% undecided. Perception of an experience with police and justice system among the black and indigenous population in Canada by Adam Cotter, Canadian Center for Justice and Community Safety Statistic. According to 2020, General Social Service and Social Identity, one of five black have a little or not confidence in police. Based on, the, on data from 2019, GSS on Canadian safety, black are likely more rate police performance poorly. About one in three blacks say that police were performing poorly in least one part of their job. Perception of the police varied among the black population. Almost six in ten Canada born black people rate at least one element of police performed poorly, well above the portion of black immigrants. Relative on the overall population, black people had particular negative perception of the ability of police to treat people fairly and approachable and easy to talk to. In 2009, 36% of the not indigenous not visible miniature people have some form of contact with the police, a portion that was similar to the among uh, black people but lower that was reported by indigenous people. The mayor of the people who report contact with the police felt that their interactions were positive. In 2001, Canadian Legal Problem Surveys found that about one quarter of black people experienced problems or dispute that they consider but the serious and not easy to fix. Black people were more likely than not indigenous, not visible miniature people to have encountered a serious problem or dispute related to discrimination. Experience of discrimination among the black and indigenous population in Canada 2019. According to the 2019 General Social Service on Canada safety, nearly half of black people aged 15 years or older report experience at least one of the form of discrimination in the past five years, compared to the 16% of the not indigenous, not visible miniature population. Of all black people, 4 in 10 experience discrimination based on their race or skin color, about 50 times higher than the portion among the not indigenous, not visible miniature population. Experience of discrimination were more, much more common among the Canadian-born black people than among black immigrants. Data from the GSS showed that considerable high proportion of black people experienced discrimination in 2009 than in 2004. In Canada, there has been many cases related to Black Lives Matter. In 2016, one man from Somalia, Abdiraham Abdi, died after a confrontation with two police officers. He came from Ethiopia as a refugee 13 years ago in 2009. He went to a school for adults and worked in a business car wash. In his workplace, one of his bosses explained that he worked for 40 years and never had a problem had a better English level than others in the same situation. His family and neighbors knew that he had a mental problems and a drug addiction. On Sunday morning of July 26 of 2006, 911 received a call from a shopping cafe that explained two customers said that Abdiraham Abdi supposedly touched them inappropriately. 
Abdi had been detained by a couple of men that were outside shopping when the police came. When the police arrived, Abdi started to run to his home that was very close to that place. When Abdi got into his building, had a fight with the two police officers, and Abdi ended up on the floor and lost consciousness. The next day, he was declared dead. According to a witness, said, I think that both of us were really surprised when the second officer arrived and immediately started beating the suspect with his fists in the face and head. I mean, Mr. Abdi was not compliant for whatever reason, but it seemed that the degree of force for the type of resistance Mr. Abdi was putting up to us, again, we're not professionals, it seemed extremely violent and extremely excessive. Another case related to Black Lives Matter happened recently. Abdullah Darwich is 19 years old and currently lives with his dad in Mississauga, Ontario. He is diagnosed with autism and is non-verbal. When his dad arrived home on November 9th, he noticed that his son had only left the house wearing shorts and hoped his car to look around the neighborhood for him. Only after driving past houses, he found an area that was taped and controlled by the police. His son was lying right in the middle with his face covering blood and handcuffed. He showed straightforward evidence of police violence and was left with psychological and physical injuries. As the police reported later, they suspected Abdullah of entering a house or vehicle without wearing many clothes. Neighbors had spotted Abdullah just playing with a pile of leaves. His dad recalled finding six spots on Abdullah's body that clearly showed that he was tasered. Later, the police said that they were unaware Abdullah was autistic. He said commented that after this incident, Abdullah is afraid of people and tends to stay in his room. This case specifically shows how violent the police is against minority and how lasting impacts police violence can have. Black Lives Matter, Toronto, the most important demands. Although there are still many reparations to be made for marginalized communities like BLM, we as a group wanted to showcase the most important demands, starting with governance, monetary compensation for the families of victims of police violence, a condemnation of Toronto police excessive use of force and ongoing intimidation and harassment tactics against Black Lives Matter protesters, policing and incarceration, charges to be laid on subject officers who murder civilians, a public apology from the mayor, chief of police, and the Toronto Police Department. Education. The creation of community healing space for Black identified students in TDSP schools who have experienced anti-racist violence in the school board through harassment by staff and administration. Redirect culturally inappropriate framing of the curriculum and Islamophobia and white supremacy. Canada must rescind all federal legislation that attacks racialized black and brown Muslims and refugees, including the Zero Tolerance for Barbaric Cultural Practices Act, as well as anti-terror legislation such as security certificates and Bill C-51. If you're interested in more information, please go to the Black Lives Matter Canada website.